For nearly 70 years, Yellowstone National Park was missing one of its most important predators, the wolf. Wolves once roamed freely across Yellowstone, apex predators shaping the balance of the ecosystem. But as settlers expanded westward, they saw the wolves as a menace, killers of livestock and competitors for game. The government put bounties on their head, traps were set, and poison was scattered across the land. The campaign was relentless. By 1926, they were extinct. With the wolves gone, their absence triggered an unexpected ecological collapse. With no natural predators, elk populations soared. With nothing to keep them in check, they overgrazed the park, eating young trees before they had a chance to grow. River banks and valleys, once covered in lush forests, were stripped bare. The impact rippled outward. Without young aspen and willow trees, the number of songbirds declined. Beavers, which rely on the trees to build dams, also began to disappear and with fewer beaver dams, aquatic habitats deteriorated. Fish, amphibians, and water-dwelling mammals suffered. Even Yellowstone's rivers changed. Without plant roots to hold the soil in place, erosion increased and river channels widened and became more unstable. Yellowstone was beginning to unravel. In 1995, scientists decided to act. They reintroduced 14 gray wolves from Canada back into the park, later adding even more. At first, they were few in number, but even with so few wolves, the effects were almost immediate. Of course, the wolves hunted elk, but more importantly, they changed their behavior. Elk started avoiding certain areas, especially open valleys and gorges, where they were more vulnerable to wolf attacks. As a result, plants in these areas were able to recover. In some places, tree heights quintupled in just six years. Aspen, willow, and cottonwood forests flourished once again. And as the vegetation returned, so did the animals. Songbirds and migratory birds nested in the newly grown forests. Beavers made a comeback using the growing trees to construct dams, which provided habitats for otters, muskrats, fish, and amphibians. The wolves even affected other predators. By reducing coyote numbers, they allowed populations of smaller prey animals like rabbits and mice to rebound. This led to an increase in hawks, weasels, foxes, and badgers. Ravens and bald eagles feasted on wolf kills, and even grizzly bears benefited not only by scavenging from wolf hunts, but also because the regenerated shrubs provided more berries for them to eat. And then something remarkable happened. Yellowstone's rivers changed. With the return of plant life, riverbanks became more stable. Tree roots anchored the soil, reducing erosion and preventing landslides. The rivers began to meander less, their channels narrowed, and more pools formed, creating better habitats for fish and other aquatic life. What had started as the return of a single predator had cascaded through the entire ecosystem, altering everything from the movement of elk to the flow of rivers. This phenomenon is called a trophic cascade, a powerful chain reaction where a top predator influences every level of the food chain. The return of wolves to Yellowstone was one of the greatest ecological success stories in history, proving that even a single species can shape the world around it in ways that we never even imagined. At Forever Green, we believe in the power of restoration. Just as the wolves reshaped Yellowstone, Every action, no matter how small, can drive meaningful change in our environment. With the Forever Green app, you can track your carbon footprint, take action to reduce it, and even support verified carbon credit projects that restore ecosystems, just like the wolves did for Yellowstone. Whether it's planting trees, protecting biodiversity, or offsetting emissions, we all have a role to play in restoring balance to our planet. Nature has shown us the way, now it's our turn to act.